What are the challenges for the non-hunters and the normal hunters in South Africa? Why is ranch line hunting such a contentious issue? The South African ranch lion industry as a whole um, has a long history of negative publicity. And the negative publicity, unfortunately, didn't come as a coincidence. There's a very good reason why there was negative publicity so often. Um, so South Africa has a big problem with the image of our captive bred lion hunting because of this. And SAPA, as an organization, aims to clean up the house of the lion industry, which is a very, very difficult task. Seeing that we are not a government organization and we are not an authority, we are just uh, an organization with um, members. And we try to, we, we develop the norms and standards and we uh, then rolled out a, a system of accreditation. So if SAPA has accredited lion hunting destinations, which an accreditation team goes out and assess, does a whole assessment on, and also attend the lion hunt before a certificate for accreditation would be awarded to that farm. And uh, we feel as SAPA, as an organization, that unfortunately uh, it is so that this long history of negative publicity is there, but we really, f we really are convinced that there is a place for the South African ranch lion hunting as, as a species um, and also it, it should fit into the rest of the South African captive bred and um, high fence hunt, hunting. There's, there's no such thing as, as a canned hunt if you, if you do it right. It all goes about the operator, it all goes about the professional hunter. The outfitter involved should know the should know the way he wants to to conduct the hunt, and he should dictate the way the hunt goes. And this this these hunts definitely has a place in the in the South African hunting fraternity. Uh, in, well, important thing was the fair chase that we've experienced now. So on the other side of the coin, the anti-hunters will argue that um, it's wrong to ranch with lions. So what is SAPA doing about the, the breeding of lions? SAPA has also, um, has also developed uh, norms and standards for breeding facilities and then um, where the breeder will also be assessed by an assessment co committee and then he will get an accreditation certificate um, because the idea is to move away from cub petting and from human imprinting on the animals. So we'll still um, do captive bred hunt, to captive bred uh, breeding, but the, there is a way, there's a very specific and uh, proper way to, to rear cubs without human imprinting. Um, and this is the kind of thing that SAPA is um, developing now. And most of lion farmers, uh, ranchers, the no ranchers, they know that you can breed like that. It's just more, it's, uh, it's a lot diffi more difficult and uh, it's, it's more of a challenge to properly raise cubs in this manner. But it is possible and we've already, we already have facilities that are completely um, zero human imprinting on their cubs, the way they grow up. So uh, SAPA is aim, aiming to also the pet, cub petting facilities where people can come and touch the cubs to make sure that those cubs don't end up in the in the hunting industry. What's what's your take? Or what is SAPA's take on the statement that uh, captive bred lion hunting does not contribute at all to the sustainability of wild lion populations? Well, there's there's a very long and uh, complicated debate. But uh, if you just take the f the mere fact that U.S. Fish and Wildlife was able to open up wild managed lion imports wild and wild managed lion imports from south africa which is a, a very very small portion of the actual 
population of South Africa because we have around 8,000 um, lions in captivity in South Africa. And uh, this already tells a big story that it's possible to start imports from a small population, a very limited population, whereas the big population, 8,000, they are not opening up imports. So definitely um, uh, the supply of lion products from the from the population in captivity takes off a severe amount of pressure of the wild and wild managed populations then also uh, sapa has pr has proven um, we everybody involved in lion lion industry know captive bred lion industry knows that a captive bred lion um, can adapt and and flourish back in uh, ideal habitat circumstances like we have here in the Kalahari. But uh, we, we have members um, who has had their, their females um, produce cubs in the wild and wean them completely. They are, they're, they're, even those cubs are grown up already again in the wild coming from captive bred populations. So we, but we still felt that we want to prove that um, this kind of a thing is possible. So our members made available a couple of um, lines suitable for this project and we, we looked for a full year. Uh, we were, we were um, sourcing ideal line habitat and then a willing owner because the thing is it's so expensive for, for an, a rancher to keep uh, lions and there's no commercial value on the lion. It's only there for, for the aesthetic value because lions actually kill so many uh, animals for their feeding. And we, we managed after a big project, after a very long intensive sourcing um, mission, we've, we've um, identified and uh, two dif different destinations where lions now are um, roaming about freely, uh, we we have a, um, we are monitoring these lions, and we, the owners don't mind. They they don't they don't uh, they're not aiming to make any money out of the lions. They just they are just willing to have the lions there. But that as a commercial value, uh, or as a as a actually as a conservation value, also proves of another point is it is so difficult to find lion range. Uh, I, firstly, ideal habitat and then worth ample um, natural prey for those lions. It's, it's, it's almost an impossible task to find a place where people, where the operators are willing to host the lions. And like here where we are now in the Kalahari, this used to be an old cattle and goat farm. It's, it's not even marginal agricultural land, it's beyond that. Uh, um, this farm, if the lion operation, the ranch lion operation would stop here, we close our doors, it will return back to being uh, domestic animals. They will find uh, cattle and goats here in 10 years time. So it's definitely impossible to, to say that, it's not fair to say that ranch lions don't have any conservation value. As a uh, individual who who love the species um, already. Uh, I'm an animal lover. I love my lions. I love all my animals that I ranch with. I am of the opinion that the just as with the rhino, the important people in our fraternity and the important people, the, the people in authority making the decisions oftentimes have limited information and they have limited knowledge of this very sophisticated topic and the same thing that happened with the rhino where we have it had a situation for very long in South Africa where there's no free trading there's this big trade ban with the aim to protect the species this actually makes the value of the horn shoot up and it makes it worthwhile for poachers to get involved and for syndicates to get involved it actually had the opposite effect on the species, so it put the species under tremendous lot of pressure. The wild managed uh, or rhino in captivity and also wild rhino.
came and still is under huge pressure. And this very same thing can flow over into the lion as a species. We've seen it, uh, there's no trade ban yet, but there's a, a limited trade because we can't, 80% of our market is the American market. And with US Fish and Wildlife's um, limited imports or actually zero imports of captive bred at the moment, we've seen suddenly a lion in captivity being poached. Several cases reported lions being poisoned and their heads and their feet cut off. This is something that we never used to see in South Africa. It happened last year as well as this year. Several occasions were, were um, noted and reported. And this is, this is a proof, definitely, that the same thing will happen as what happened with the rhino. There is this great uh, demand uh, eastern, from the eastern markets for lion bones. There's nothing we can do about it. This demand has existed for many years. And it, uh, it won't cease to exist. And South Africa used to export between 600 and 1,000 sets of lion bones. And if this supply gets cut off, definitely without a doubt, the pressure from that demand will flow over into our wild and wild managed lion populations of Southern Africa, mm -hmm. just as the same happened with the rhino as a species. The ranch lion industry can supply this demand. It has a role to fulfill. Uh, if done correctly and in a proper manner, there's definitely a place for the ranch lion hunt as a, uh, as a hunting experience. And this, this as an industry, has, has, has a, a very specific purpose that I believe it can fulfill in one, also uh, supplying a great need for this eastern market for the bones and also for the for the for the trophy hunter uh, if done correctly and if done properly it's a great hunting experience and then thirdly definitely uh, it's been proven that ranch lions adapt perfectly in the wild and uh, we we can play a role in the repopulation in future it might be necessary they can um, come some crisis with the lion, wild lion population and the wild managed lion populations of southern Africa and the ranch lion population can stand in if necessary.